Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hey, it's Kyle Meredith, host of the Kyle Meredith with podcast, presented by WFPK at WFPK.org and the Consequence Podcast Network. It's a series that puts the spotlight on iconic musicians and actors, inviting them to drop by and talk about their latest projects, whether it's albums, TV shows, films, or beyond. I'm going to say something I don't want to say. Here it goes. Without Spinal Tap, there is no Tenacious D. Whoa. (laughs) Man. We get great stories and the biggest scoops from people like Garbage's Shirley Manson, the 1975's Matty Healy, Jack Black and Kyle Gass of Tenacious D, Maya Hawk, Kiefer Sutherland, and everyone in between. New episodes arrive every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones. You can find Kyle Meredith with on the Consequence Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts. Merry many Monday chunkies. I'm Carter. Doge. <laughs> Jordan. It was like <laughs> today's secret word is. Oh man, I giggled. My, I done giggled myself. Cheese. Cheese. The word I said of I'm the Carter. Day is did y'all movies. say things? Yeah, yeah. I said my name. I'm How did I it's miss that? Course. I don't know. You were too busy focused on your next thing. Mm. Thinking about what you're going to say next instead of listening to what I'm saying. Wow. Mm, Carter. Mm. Wow. Mm. 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 Carter. Communications one on one. Communication professor. Interesting. Mm, Carter. Speaking of communication professors, let's talk about. Some Super Bowl commercial trailers. Some Super Bowl trailers. Trailers are usually a big yeah. deal during the Super Bowl, I guess. I guess trailers still are. We get teases for those. Commercials aren't anymore. I mean, even if they're good commercials, we see them days and days ahead of right. time. Yeah. So it's kind of like the, are you going to the midnight showing of uh, Ant-Man Quantumania at 4? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, at 4 I p.m. Am. I'm going to the midnight showing. I'm going Thank to the Friday guys. premiere at 4 p.m. on Thursday. For all the adults. Midnight in the UK. The next morning. Uh, I really yeah, think… That's huge. I really, I personally think there's only one that is worth mentioning. Yes. Uh, because okay. some of these trailers are just extra versions of trailers that we've already seen before. We did have a bit of a reaction to Fast X. Um, yes. Recently. And so that looks fun. As always, I think Momoa is going to be great. But let's talk a little bit about the Flash. Do we have to feel about? I think so. I think okay. Why? That's the my question when I watch this movie trailer is why? Mm -hmm. Because there is like the whole conceit of I mean it's it's Flashpoint. They're adapting Flashpoint, which is like the Flash story. It's a little silly to do that for your first ever Flash movie, but we did. Batman versus Superman for our first ever movie featuring more than just Superman. So I, I think we just jumped the gun in general in this version of the DC and movie universe. Speaking of gun really quick, I can't not let yeah. that pass. It's too perfect. Uh, no, this has good. nothing to do with gun, correct? Right. So this is, is right. this the la- this and maybe Craven? Is Craven still coming out? Craven is not DC. 
Craven oh is gosh, Marvel. It's Sony. I do but it, it is every Sony. Time. But is this uh, one of the last DCs? Pre- no, there's still there's still Shazam two. There's still the Flash. Oh yeah. There's yeah. still Aquaman, and there's still Blue Beetle. Uh, yes. And okay. so I'm not sure exactly why somebody might care about. I, I get like caring about the Flash and Aquaman, or about Shazam and Aquaman because those are sequels to movies that you've already seen, and presumably if you saw them, you loved them. Yeah. Uh, but the whole to know them is to of, love them. The whole conceit of Flashpoint is the multiverse thing of like, what is the new universe going to be? Am I going to break the universe? And so if this is used as like a Ezra, Ezra Miller does some time travel stuff and resets the whole of existence to bring about the James Gunn verse, that feels not interesting. Yep. It feels like, Pointless. okay, we already read about this. Now I'm just watching them. They made a movie out of a press release. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. If, it doesn't, if it doesn't do that, then why did they make this movie? It really just feels like sunk cost. Well, it's not going like, to do already, They made this movie before. We've already that. spent so much money to make this movie, so let's just, I guess, finish it. Yeah, you it, know, I don't know, man. It feels I'm like not having excited. an album release party for an album you're not going to release. An album release party for a band that just broke up. Yes. Yeah. So, Oof. okay, you're not going to tour this. You're not going to sell merch. Why are you doing this? But at least with that, there's intrinsic value to the art itself as a standalone piece. It might be a really good record, and that is still enough. But with the the never-ending hype cycle, uh, the perpetual hype machine, which band name, Dibs, the perpetual <laughs> hype machine of superhero franchises, yeah, releasing a movie in a dead universe does no good. Because yep. o- about 50% of the function of these kinds of movies is to advertise for the next one. Yeah, that's great. I was going to I was gonna have a hypothetical question for you guys, but I guess it's not that hypothetical. I was going to be like, how, how do you imagine, hmm. like, if you were a big DC fan, <laughs> which you are, <laughs> I would consider yeah. you both really big DC fans. It's yeah. just this this universe hasn't been good. I wonder who is who is genuinely excited. And I'm not trying to sound, you know, de- looking down the yeah bridge of my nose or anything, but it's like, who actually cares about this film? Who cares about this film? I mean, I'll probably see it. I don't know if I'll see it in theaters. I think were it not for Keaton as Batman again, which even that is so clearly just a one-off. You know, we did a Batman series. Was that last year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, about a year ago. And, and that was so fun to be able to do that and and remember how much I like Keaton as Batman, as Tim Burton Batman, and how he was, yeah. he was even in contention for maybe my favorite iteration of Batman. And so we get him back, but it's like, for for what? Why? You know? Why? It looks sort of goofy to me. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like not… Not yuck goofy, but like dumb goofy. Of course. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Was, were there any other trailers that we saw from Dale? Uh, Guardians, th- Guardians oh, yeah, 3 yeah. trailer, which looks to be more of the same. Yep. Which is good. I liked the first two enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if it's as good as the first X one, trailer, I'll be thrilled. Obviously. If it's as good as the second one, I'll be pleased. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. That's how I feel about a lot um, of things in life. Mm. <laughs> What else did we get? We got Fast X, which obviously we know how we all feel about Fast X. Yeah, of course. That's immediately was, clear to anybody who's listened to more than just this episode of our podcast. Was Creed 3 new? That might have been a new trailer, but we've we've had a lot of… Yeah. I think if there was newness in that trailer, it was like 20 seconds. Uh, any other trailers worth mentioning here from the Super yeah, Bowl? Not from the Super Bowl, but before Ant-Man, I saw the Air Jordan… Trailer. Yeah. Mm. That um, looks good. I, I agree. I think it looks really interesting. Ben Affleck with like… Basically, a jerry curl is very interesting to me. Not sure. He yeah, does a lot of interesting hair things. He days. does. Good for you. He I does. Guess. Way to go, Ben. Way to go, Ben. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate Any, look, that. You, put, you put Ben and Damon back together, directed by Ben. Then you throw Bateman in the mix. Forget it. Forget Bateman, it. Ben and, and Viola Davis. The EGOT herself. Oh, yeah, and Viola dude. Davis. Good the grief. EGOT. Congrats on that EGOT. Not many of those, served. dude. I mean, honestly. There's really not. It's a you big get an deal. E- you get an EGOT. She got an EGOT, and then now she's just playing Michael Jordan's mom. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's probably a EGOTs bigger honor. do something like that, you know? Uh, hey, really quick, really quick. She got. That's amazing. Do you think if we reach out to her today that she would respond back and we could make this movie with her about her life called She Got? About her winning an EGOT called She Got? She Got. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still Definitely. have her number, Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speed dial. Of course. You don't delete yeah, Miles Davis's number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> good point. Good point. You definitely don't do that. Uh, guys, I want us to take a little venture here. Uh, we, we've talked about, you know, Patreon on our podcast. 
that top tier of Patreon, you get into Discord. Uh, Discord allows you that opportunity to uh, put a few things in the box. You know, mm. put, give us some box questions. We ask uh, every now and then on this podcast, what's in the box? And really what that is, is uh, reaching out to the Chunkies and saying, what kind of questions do you have for us on this day? There were so many good questions this time. Guess Normally there's there's not any at all. Like these people. I mean, it's because oof. it's because once you've done almost JK, 500 JK, JK, episodes JK, JK. of a thing, you've shared everything about yourself. Mm-hmm. There's almost no question anybody could ask us that we haven't mm-hmm. accidentally volunteered that information at some point in the last five years. There's yes. an entire subsection of people in our lives where the information imbalance is insane. Yeah, how much they know about us versus how little we know about them. <laughs> yeah. That is very true. That is. Bizarre. I find it unsettling. Yeah, I don't like to think about that. <laughs> uh, our first question comes from Shelly Noor. How many is it? Korok seeds. Yeah. Did I get mm-hmm. it right? Yeah. By the you way, did. when the world, when Rihanna came out and said, we found out, did y'all also find out recently it's Rihanna, not Rihanna? Yeah, I did. I'm finding out right now as you're saying this. It is Rihanna. And it is so hey, nice. Hey, no, it's not. It's so nice for everyone to feel this. It can't be. It is. It's Rihanna. This is impossible. And not Rihanna. It's Rihanna. This is impossible. Welcome. So it's um, Umbrella. <laughs> Stand under her Umbrella. Get out, here, get out of here. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Shelly Noor asks, how many Korok seeds has Jordan found on Breath of the Wild? Uh, this is an easy question. My official answer is as many as I naturally found while playing. As soon as I found out what the reward was for finding all of them, I decided not worth it. What's the reward? You basically... Mm-hmm. Gift card? You basically get poop. It's literally a golden turd. <laughs> it's like a bit, essentially. You find them all, and then the game's just like, here's poop. It doesn't do anything. That's so awesome. I know. Doesn't that kind of I make know. you want to find them all? I have found probably almost all of them just through wandering around and being like, oh, Korok. See, I never ignore one when I see a chance to get one, but I have not. They're not called Ignorox seeds. Dang, dude. Because basically I've, I've beaten Breath of the Wild three times, but I've never a hundred percent of it any of the times because, oh my God, it's so big. It's it is a crazy so big. big game. I mean, I'm guessing the new, the new Breath of the Wild game is supposed to be bigger. Dude, it's going to be bigger probably. like twice as big Based on it's my starting theories. to look like a double high roll. <laughs> it's a double high roll. Oh my! Based God. on what I think is happening with the timeline oh. of that game, I I do think that there are two completely different high rules, and then also up in the sky. So it's pretty mm. big. Jeez Louise! Jeez Louise! Even Dill the Louise Destroyer Nintendo. has a couple questions for us. Question number one: Who was your starting Pokemon? Now, I'm Squirtle sure Dillman's question. I'm sure Dillman understands. There's a lot of Different Pokemon games. There's a lot of different starters. I know what he means. But he means the, the OG. I was Bulbasaur. Mm. Bulbasaur started. I was. I was not allowed to play Pokemon. Whoa. Because they're demons. Mm-hmm. Sean you Brad, like a demon. <laughs> I was. Mm. I just wanted to but be But probably different. what's the most like powerful no one? one? Did Bulbasaur. It's true. What's the most powerful one? The most right, powerful so. one to start with? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. At the beginning? Yeah. Probably Squirtle. I think I had Mewtwo probably. Dang. Dang. That's His other right. question is, what video game do you want to see become an HBO series? Now, we'll stay specific here with HBO. It used to be hmm. that a certain channel or certain streaming platform allowed us to be more graphic. But now it just feels like everything but Disney Plus maybe. Uh, you can have like a TVMA type show. So I'm going to say… Yeah, for sure. I'm going to say Dark Souls. Ooh. I just know a lot of people that really like that game. I don't know much about it, but it definitely feels like an HBO vibe. Sure. So I'm going to say Dark Souls. My official answer is Bloodborne, of course, because I want it so bad. And yeah. ever since Juicy. Ever since I heard the rumors of the Diego Del Gorbo adaptation, I got real sighted. But my more interesting answer maybe is Dishonored. I think that, Ooh, that would be fun. There's enough meat on the bones to do. If you flesh out some of the characters and stories, you could do it a really interesting, like, political intrigue assassination story. Mm-hmm. And it could be really fun. Yeah. 
I'm going to change my yeah. answer. I'll do it after Doge so I don't take it from him. But I got Dark Souls and Bloodborne mixed up. So. Mm. Oh, no. Happens to, fine, fine, fine. happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us. I think, and I have no idea how this would work, but I think the idea of a portal show mm. that's like a, a little bit of a severance vibe almost with Aperture Labs mixed with that. Have you seen the trailers for the new Apple TV show, Hello Tomorrow? Mm-mm. It literally came out today, oh, but it's no. kind of like a retro futuristic vibe, like almost almost like Fallout retro future Re- retro kind of vibe. Retro future is a vibe. I love it. Yeah, but like sure. a... A portal thing mixed with those with made out of those two flavors, I think, could be really interesting. So, Obviously, not the story from the games because there there is none. virtually none to speak H- of. It's just out. puzzles. But a story, a, a a portal show that is more the good place in Aperture Labs than anything else. Yeah, could be really fun. Yeah, vibe wise, I think. Yep. Also, yep. before or, oh. portal could be a game show. Like they could make it like a like a physical competition show that's themed after Portal. Like there's a show about the game show or there's an actual game show? An actual No, like they show? could turn it into like an actual game show themed after it. That's oh. like, you know, like if they if they create like sets and stuff where you walk through a portal and it looks like you've come out a portal on the other side and they do interesting stuff with set design and like, blast. I don't know, that could be fun and cool. I want to play that game. Jordan, yeah. what were you going to say? I was just going to say for everybody's edification, uh, Doge is finally playing Elden Ring. Can we get a quick progress check? Uh, I have slain. I have slain Godric the Grafted. That dude looks crazy. And, and now I'm, I've seen. Yes. Now I'm riding around on my magic horse, uh, killing stuff. Just killing stuff. On I haven't the done house. anything else yet. Killing stuff on the horse. We'll do frequent check-ins with Doge's Elden Ring progress for those interested, like me. I love that. I love that. I um. Uh, I just said I was going to change my answer. I'm going to change it to Bioshock. Um, that is happening though, huh? Is it now? Is it actually? It's rumored, been, it's rumored, been rumored for a for long a time. Feels like. But what I have heard is that it's Amazon, which is makes me nervous. Amazon's pretty hit and miss here. Let's see. We each have computers in front of us with access to all the world's information. Uh, uh, speak not for if yourself. Your disc is slow. Ooh. <laughs> Bioshock is going to be a Netflix movie. Uh, let's not do that, though. Let's not do that. Oh, no. What a bummer. Netflix, fine. Movie, no thank That's you. That's so much story do, for a movie. Yeah. Netflix officially announced it February 15th of last year. Almost. And again, yeah. Francis, in August of last year, Francis Lawrence. which Be Over is, a year ago there, pal. August of last year. They said February of last year? February 15th February of, of last, last year. year. Yeah, they announced it. Yep. August of last year. They announced that Francis Lawrence, who directed The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, I Am Legend, and Netflix's Slumberland, was directing and producing uh, the live action okay. adaptation. No. And Michael Green, who wrote Logan and Blade Runner 2049, is writing the screenplay. Yeah. Hmm. Screenplay should be pretty also, easy because it's based on something good. So I'm not as concerned about that. Michael Green also wrote Death on the Nile. So you win some, you lose <laughs> you some. Win if you're some Michael you Green. lose some. Um, <laughs> we should, and I think this was, Dillman must have asked this question, uh, birthed from Last of Us. We should talk about last week's episode. Again, you're not going to get the most recent episode, I guess, for us. So this would be the episode from a week ago. Uh, I could just say it's Big Sad. I think it's still great. It's a Big Sad show. It's no, a Big the last Sad show. I mean, yeah. it's The Last of Us. It's such a Big yeah. Sad show. Game is, game is Big Sad too, actually. Yeah. Um, I, and I've, I've watched crying, the game. The crying watched the game, game you've ever seen. Um, to see that truck go into the cavernous abyss of the, the, the Kansas City inns that were left long ago, yeah, was done very well, and it was very stressful, very stressful. Yep. They made Sam even sadder. Yep. Don't know what, how they did that. What a sweet boy. Made him, yep. They made him younger, boy. first of all. They made him much younger. In the game, younger. he's just about Ellie's age. And uh, I think the addition younger is going to being... definitely make that pill much easier to swallow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I think the addition of him being deaf is very fun and interesting because I what I wish they would have gone into is that the is that like ASL has saved their lives a couple times, keeping them quiet in situations where they would have had yeah. to talk out loud. I think that would have been really interesting. Yeah, I wonder if into. they thought it was it could get too close to quiet place. I mean, one one Maybe. scene just to show yeah. it, I don't think would would do that. I think it, I think it would have been cool. The stress of him just looking around at people's nonverbals and just being like, "What's happening?" Yeah, you know. Yeah, really Excellent. well done episode. Great Excellent. episode. Woof, woof. <sighs> Joseph Glass says this might be a spicier question. 
So usually if someone Ew. prefaces like that, there's an assumption that it Ooh. might be spicy. But what are y'all's thoughts on separating the art from the artist? He said, I'm interested to hear y'all's thought on how that might play into enjoyment or perception of a performance of a film, etc. A few examples he gave are uh, Army Hammer, T.J. Miller, uh, Ansel Elgort, uh, Ezra Miller. That one's like a landmine for you, huh? It's, it's really hard for me. <laughs> it's really hard for me. <laughs> Um. Yeah. What are y'all's? He even mentioned like the singer Chris Brown, but I'd love for us to keep it just in movies. Sure. Um, as someone who was walking around Harry Potter world a couple of weeks ago, and just how scattershot opinions uh, from the creator from J.K. have been recently, we actually had a conversation with with the friends that we were with about just separating that of just kind of like you know what, I'm still going to enjoy this. This still was a big deal to me. There's certain things. Sure. I think everybody has a little bit of a barometer on what is too much. You know, I think I'm out, out on Army Hammer. I wasn't in, in ever. Yeah. So when someone, you know, flirts a little bit with cannibalism, I think I'm out, out. You know, there's some stuff that's just too much. Fairly the biggest, uncontroversial the biggest stance, out, I think. Out of my life <clears throat> has been, I, I, I think if I had liked Ezra Miller more, I might not be out on him. Yet he's he's wild. Jared Leto, he's just had bad performances. He's crazy. There's plenty of uh what someone might call like a loony. <laughs> There's plenty of loonies yeah. in the movie business. But like I'm fully out on Kevin Spacey. I'm fully out on Bill Cosby. Like there are there are people that are just sure. I just can't bring myself to empath with any fake character that they try and bring to the screen. To be honest, I think there there's something to be said for I, I don't want to use the word like sliding scale because that sounds like free passes depending on talent level and that's not what it is. But I think it's easy it's easy for me to say like if there's a a victim to somebody's badness, then that makes it harder for me. Like if you yeah. can pinpoint someone who has been specifically affected, that makes it really hard for me. Um, I mean, I know we're talking about movies, but like Chris Brown's pretty obvious, right? Like he. He beat a person. So yeah. that's a pretty hard no and for me. We're here to tell you, not good. Not, yeah, we don't like not that. Not a good over thing here. to do. But like, um, man, I, I don't know. This is tough. I think that people can change. I think that people can learn. I think that people can grow. But I think that, that there has to be enough time for that to happen for me to buy it. Mm. And I, I just think that when it comes to separating art from artist, it is. Um, mm. Always difficult and frequently impossible for me. Yeah. But not not impossible and definitely not always impossible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it really, it just depends on what has happened. Uh, you know, like Chris Pratt is a, is a tame example, right? I just kind of think that yeah. his whole thing is tired and he did not, not only has he not really grown, I don't think he's any better as an actor today than he was 10 years ago. And I also don't think that his public persona has grown charming with time. Yeah. And so, but that's an example of a very low stake separate art from artist. I can still enjoy something he's in, even though I think he's a little exhausting Yeah. Um, as a person. But then, you know, when somebody has hurt someone in some way, that makes it a lot harder for me. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring up time too, because there is certainly relationship maintenance that can happen. Um, with the Robert Downey yeah. Juniors of the world and things like that. But even then… Perfect example. It's it's the ones that I mentioned that I'm out on. I think I don't know what path they get back. You know, I think there's some people sure. that are just done. Um, but yeah. Doge, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I think to me it, it depends on the presence of a victim. If there is like… Like Robert Downey Jr. is a great example because I think the victim was Robert Downey sure. Jr. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Neglect, like it, it was a lot of like… Hey man, you can do this. I believe in you. You can turn it around. Uh, but I don't know. I think there's there's nobody's owed a platform. You know what I mean? Right. So like, if somebody's a real dookie head, sorry. Like you you had this shot. Yeah. If you, you don't had a take platform, care of your public facing you persona, then why should you I? You don't care get it about anymore. You? Yeah. That's fine. Like there's there's a million people who are funny comedians. So uh, Louis C.K. I don't have to give you your platform back. I don't have to listen to what you say anymore. Yep. There's a million people who are funnier than you. That haven't done uh, the things you've done. That haven't done the horrible things and you've done. And in fact, exactly. I'll say it with Louis C.K. Overrated. 
Yeah, big time. Overrated. Yeah. Funny, but overrated. Yeah, I think regardless of whether or not there's conversations with your friend groups about separating the art from the artist, it is something that we subconsciously measure to an extent. Oh, sure. Because I think especially when you have like Michelle Yeoh and like other members of our Everything Everywhere All at Once cast that we see winning and like we're rooting for them. When it's someone who's just genuinely a very good person that is also being rewarded yeah. in a way that their platform like acknowledges, it feels yeah. extra special because you're like, this That's is also a great person. Um, right. But For yeah, sure. very good question. Let's go to ads really quick and we've got a few more questions when we get. Welcome to Breeze Line, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. Back. Um, hmm. Should I go with this one or this one, Doge? What do you think? Probably this one. Okay. You've been given a nearly unlimited blank check. This is from B. Taylor. You've been Mm. given a nearly unlimited blank check to create a new film or TV series based on a new IP. What company do you want to work for? What's the genre? What's the setting? And then who are you casting? Now, this is huge. We don't have to go too much into it. I think one of the most interesting things, and I don't know how much we've talked about this, uh, specifically in the context of if we had the power, but what company do you want to work for? If you're if you're creating a film or a TV series, there's only two answers to this. If it's a movie, it's a twenty four, and it's I a, think there's if more. It's a TV show, it's HBO. Those are both great ones. They both they both let good answers creative people do almost whatever they want to make the thing happen. Yeah. See, I am conscious enough of my my own defects and shortcomings that I don't want. <laughs> I don't want a blank check. If me. 28-year-old Justin Aaron Dozier is making a film or a TV show. I don't know what I'm doing. I think Monkey Paw could be fun. That's Jordan Peele's mm. production company. It would be fun. Um, but I, I would have said A24, and I will say A24 as well. Uh, and it's funny because A24 doesn't hardly ever, it feels like they usually have a smaller budget than the rest of the world. So yeah. an A24 unlimited budget is wild. I wonder if A24 will ever dip into... Like a fan, like a bigger like fantasy or sci-fi series. I mean, there's no like way the franchise? budget of everything everywhere was small. Uh, that's a good question. I'm gonna look that up. I mean, Rakakuni alone had to be a couple milli. <laughs> that was an actual raccoon, <laughs> voiced by Randy Newman. <laughs> Twenty-five million. So it's bigger for them. Twenty-five million <laughs> made a hundred. Uh, I'm gonna say Amblin Entertainment. Which is Stevie Spielie's production company. Yeah. I think it'd be a lot of fun to to work because if I had blank check, I would want to do something probably sci-fi. Uh, and to have the Amblin connections with all of the the people who worked in Bigatures for all the Steven Spielberg projects, with his the connections that come with Amblin, I feel like that would be a huge asset to this imaginary project. I like that. I think I'm gonna go A24, I'm gonna go a series. Uh And the genre is going to be horror. Horror comedy. I'm going to do like a dark comedy. I had had an idea for a long time of um, some kind of like origin story of, it would definitely be fantasy because it's this character that has access to all sorts of worlds. But someone who basically taught everybody, all the greatest villains in literature, like how to be villains because he was so bored with his life. He like comes from a world that everybody's so nice. He's like, we need some juxtaposition here. People should just be mean. I've actually got a whole uh, script here too. I'll send that out to B. Taylor if he wants to, if he knows anybody. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to cast Winona Ryder. Ooh. Pretty simple. I'm making a comedy. Um, it's going to star Jason Bateman because he's the shortcut to funny. Mm-hmm. That's all I know so far. It's a working, it's a work in progress. Uh, I'm making a science fiction series. It probably will get stuck on Paramount Plus, honestly, if I'm working with Amblin, but that's okay. If it's good enough, people will buy Paramount Plus. Uh, but it's going to be set in the 1960s uh, in Roswell, New Mexico. 
Uh, and it is when aliens do crash on Area 51 or when the U.S. government shoots down aliens on Area 51. And we're bringing Hugh Laurie out of retirement oh. to be the main character for this <laughs> as a CIA agent who is uh, just generally over all this alien stuff. Man, disgruntled agent. That's, that, that, that is key in the alien world. I mean, it's Tommy Lee Jones and Men in Black at that point, but he didn't even say disgruntled. Pretend, That's how much you pretend know. Pretend is more He's going to be disgruntled. He didn't even <laughs> yeah, say right. that. Yeah, you just knew it's just going to happen, guys. And everybody around him is going to be like perfectly gruntled, <laughs> and Hugh Laurie's going to be like, "Why are you all so, so gruntled? Are you all grunt right now? Gruntled. Cam asks, "What music are you guys listening to? Uh, ever heard of Paramore? I heard the new That's album. I'm listening to right now. It's pretty good." I like it so far. I'm listening to that. And then I'm actually, I'm still pretty stuck on Lizzie McAlpine's album from last year. Mm -hmm. I am such, Good one. I am such a big podcast person, especially like sports podcasts. I definitely listen to more Same, podcasts dude. <laughs> than music. Um, but in terms of the music that I got rolling in my ears, usually when I'm working, uh, I'll play something that doesn't have lyrics. But Same. to be honest, Renaissance has been a wonderful background to just getting anything done because it's just a pretty consistent driving beat and it is the yeah. queen bee and yeah. it, it motivates me. It's not hard for her to motivate Makes you feel like you could be a king bee someday. I, maybe I can be a king bee. Dude, until you said that, I was thinking like Renaissance music, like from a Ren fair, like medieval yeah. no, like music. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's I was like, it's crazy that Beyonce made that record. Because you said, you said instrumental. So I was like, interesting. I would never, ever do that. Ever. Dude, whenever in her <laughs> Renaissance tour, whenever she brings the lute out on stage and the guy's like in costume playing the lute, it's crazy how she got a jester. That's yeah. what's crazy. It's amazing. Most of my it's And the jester knows all the. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say that Jester knows all the dance moves to single ladies, <laughs> but that's not funny. Mm, I was just going to say most of my dissertation is, is written on scroll, so it just kind of makes sense. <laughs> With the quill Giving pen. The everywhere. <laughs> uh, what movie do you want to show uh, your future children? First of all, Anthony of the audience, that's assuming a lot, but for your hypothetical, we'll do this. What movie do you want to show your future children, and at what age are you showing them? 100%. My kids will see Jurassic Park at 10 years old. What yep, cuz I the we have talked about on this Park. podcast how how formative to your tastes and how memorable the consumption of of art and movies around that age can be and I know yep. for a fact that until my great great and we're talking about assuming a lot great 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 grandchildren die Jurassic Park will still hold up. It's still going to be such yeah. a good yeah. movie. 10 years old Jurassic yep. Park It'll be like it'll be like a special holiday. Yep, I think you have to load up a plan from fifth grade to freshman year of high school of tastemakers. You got to pace them out. You got to create a calendar from ten to, from ten to fourteen, and you got to figure out what what's going to build proper taste. So, with that yeah. said, Jurassic Park is an excellent answer. I'm going to go with seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade. We're doing Lord of the Rings a full watch. Oh. I was, that was my answer, absolutely. And I'm going to make That's them coming. wait until six or seven so they can understand what's going on. The That's full watch idea. of Lord of the Rings is coming, by the way, after a special, like, months-long event where it's like, hey, Dad's going to read you The Hobbit, and we're going to read The Hobbit together, and we're going to love The Hobbit, and then we're going to watch The Lord of the Rings. It's going to be a whole Tolkien thing. Yeah. Sure. That'll definitely happen. What's going to be, like, what would be a movie that, if your kiddo comes up and is like, hey, I was interested in this. Would you want to watch this? And you, it's, you've never talked about it. But you're like, oh my God, it's here. The time is, I can't believe. Like, imagine your child coming to this movie by themselves. I think, I think a 17, 16 or 17 year old is like, dad, I don't know. It feels pretty dark, but I think I'd really like to watch Sons of the Lambs with you tonight. Mm. I, would, I, yep. would, I would really have to think about it. It'd be one of these like, like a like a like a fist bite where you're just like, oh. yeah, yeah. You know what? I think that's a good idea. Let's talk to your mom. <laughs> I need to talk to your mom first. I think it'd be something. It'd be something like Alien for me because I think uh, I'm not a parent or a caregiver right now. But if I were, I don't know that I could <laughs> ever feel awesome about being like, hey, let's watch Alien and scare you completely to death. Uh, but if my kid is like, hey, let's watch Alien, I'd be like, yeah, you're ready for it. 
you asked for it. <laughs> I can wash my hands of this if you get too scared. If any hypothetical future children of mine can't handle Alien, I don't want them. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Speaking of things back. they can't handle, here's another good question with that. Um, again, I'm, I'm assuming a lot now that this is even a good question. Are there movies that you're just probably going to be like, nah, like they're just going to have to go to college and do that without you? Or you got to wait till college? Like, is there something up until 18 that if they're like, hey, can I watch this? You're like, I no, absolutely not. I mean, by that point, I probably will not be going to the theaters to see Avengers 11 with them. So they could do all that stuff on their own. What about like movies that I'll exist? probably be? I'm talking about like no, fully over it by no then. No child of mine will watch the DCEU movies under my roof. That's not, that will never happen. <laughs> mm. if, if, if a hypothetical future child is like, can we, I heard that there was a whole Justice League thing in the, I will already have my hand over their mouth. Like, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't talk about that. Shush, we shush, do not shush, do shush. that in this house. You know better than that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think if I had like a 16-year-old that wanted to watch Midsummer, I'd really have to think about that. Well, sure. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's just like, maybe it's just not a- appropriate. I don't know. I think my parents were so protective over all that stuff, and I just did it all anyway that I think somewhere deep down, <laughs> I just know they're going to watch whatever they want to watch somehow anyway. <laughs> yeah. So might as well watch it with them. Yeah. That's true. I would. I'll totally go through a Twilight series with with my son or daughter sure. again. Sure. Yeah. Totally. And if they're making fun it of it, with Taylor Lautner in your time, life again, what a time to connect. I mean, my yeah. entire childhood was basically, can I do this thing? No. Okay. And then just doing it anyway. So. Oh darn! Can't do that thing. <laughs> yee yee. We're gonna finish with this here question. Yee yee says. We know that Doge likes orange chicken enough to eat it out of the trash. I swear I will never lift this down. Of course I did that one time. What a crazy thing to assume you would ever live down. (laughs) It means so much that you were vulnerable vulnerable enough to share that. But You light yourself on fire one time and it's all anybody can talk about. (laughs) The question itself was, what food is your orange chicken? I'm assuming yee means, would you eat out of the trash? Well, Doge's answer is orange chicken is his orange chicken. Do you have another one, Doge? He's left. Bye. He left. He's so embarrassed. I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I guess it's embarrassing. No, my, the honest answer is top of the trash can, there's a, a ton of foods I would just not let go to waste. There is. I'm such a. Oh, really? Really? Interesting. I'm, let's unpack that more. No need to unpack it. It's obvious. What's tough is like I'm a I'm just a straight up like sauce boy. I don't know if you knew that. That's what I had an album I made a, about ten years ago. But I am a sauce boy, and sauce trash is not going to happen for me if it's no. out of the vessel. Sure, you know. No. But if we've got like I a vessel, I wasn't oh, scooping stop, up and oh, filtering this orange is, chicken. On, honestly, hey, can we? You know, podcast aside, <laughs> it's just sad at this point, dude. Just, <laughs> just take it. You know, just take it. Everybody knows what happened. Just um. My trash food. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having a hard time with my trash food. There's definitely been plenty of times where I'm walking out of a restaurant and I can look at someone's like table and they just didn't touch a certain food. Like if I'm walking out of Chewy's and there's just a full thing of jalapeno ranch and I'm like, dude. Oh, see, I'm out on anything somebody might have double dipped in. If I'm well, being I don't honest, know. I, I might not. Opinion. I would never do it at a restaurant. If a stranger double dips, I, that's I hang on. No, I have to. I have to set the record straight. I'm not saying I would eat trash point. out of. A, I didn't say you ate trash point. out of a restaurant. I. I it's just I sad. Only at this point. I. I watched them put the container. Oh, it's such a bummer, on the top dude. of were, the trash. You can. were sleuthing. It's such a. Yeah, I was <laughs> waiting, <laughs> hiding behind just a fake tree. No, I. But like, if this I'm was indoors, if I'm at a friend's this was house, in the staff room at my old job, I watch. I walked in to get some water. I watched them put the container on top of the trash, and then they left. There was no witness to my crime. I just pulled it off the top of the trash. It's easy. Such a bummer. And I think you know what. And you know what. I think you know what I think. And here's what I'll say about this. I think you boys would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, of course, Doge. Yeah. It, do you remember when you were a kid and your mom was like, don't react to the bullies? <laughs> That's giving them what they want. Nobody's, nobody's surprised you ate sealed fresh trash chicken. It's just the <laughs> easiest thing to make fun of and you flip out every time and it's amazing. I don't, I don't, I'm not a gross person. 
I know you're not. A I'm gross not person. a gross person. If I was at if I was at a friend's house and I went to go throw away a can of Lacroix, and I opened up the trash can and there was a Cane Rosso box on top, and I was like, "Yo, what's in this?" And they were like, "Oh, it's a honey bastard." And I was like, "How long ago did you throw this away?" Oh wow. Oh, oh. And they were like, how long ago did you throw this away? And they were like, dude, like 10 minutes before you got here, that box is immediately coming open and I'm looking yeah. at how much pizza is left. Yeah. Because that pizza is too good to throw away. So I think I've found the clip from this episode that I'll post on social media just to make sure that we kind of set the record straight it's and I don't a have bummer. a trash it's reputation just anymore. at this point. You've never really had a trash reputation. I'm sure people that have never have seen you before imagine you to be a really nice, greasy boy. <laughs> yeah, they're they're actually correct. The I didn't shower before one? we started this, so the grease is correct. People is, do say now, that okay, our voices now, sound is alike. Doge the one? Is Doge the one that eats garbage, or is it is him? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the garbage one. I'm like the Rakakuni of our podcast, probably. <laughs> Rakakuni is so fun to say. It's very fun to say. <laughs> Gosh, we watched uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once on Valentine's Day. Ooh, uh, and good wept choice. And wept and wept and wept. And we wept and wept together. And I put uh, googly eyes on a lot of our furniture and items in the house. Amazing. Uh, there's still, still a few. You're my Wayman, Carter. Uh. Um, <laughs> we watched Crazy Stupid Love. Uh, we haven't watched it in a little while. And yeah. um, man, that's… That movie's a banger. Great movie, huh? That movie's a banger. Yeah. Also watched, yeah. I watched Big Fat Greek Wedding. Okay. It was not my bad. second time, but I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. It's not bad. It's a good movie. Nice. It's charming. I like it's it. It's a fun little time capsule of like rom-com. Yeah, sure. Age. Um, sure. A yeah. bag of chips. I think if there's an opened bag of chips, I, I think I'd take a peek in there, depending on the chips. Dry foods. From Dry foods for sure, yeah. Yeah. And I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to go after this. There's definitely been a hand in here. That'll be tough to not think about. Someone else is like going to be in there. French fry or something, fully out. You yeah, know, do that. something that's best stale and soggy. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing that. Something without a lid, I think I'm out on. If yeah. it's at the top of an open trash can, I'll eat it. Was the, was the chicken still yeah, warm? Like dosh? at the very top. This is a genuine yeah. question. Uh, no, sorry. No, it wasn't because it, it was catered for lunch that day and it had been in the fridge since lunch. And this was the end of the workday. This was like 5 p.m. They're throwing away day one leftovers? Yes, sir. This was fridge chicken. You didn't heat it up? It was cold. No, I heated. Of he course, trying I to eat it before he got seen. <laughs> There's no time. No, to I, was, eat. I was trying to eat it. I had to go straight from work to the premiere of <laughs> Avengers Endgame. Oh, because if you if you heat it up and somebody goes, "Oh, was there more?" What do you do? <laughs> if it if <laughs> if the plate yes, is <laughs> inaccessible to someone like you, if the plate is spinning in the microwave and somebody <laughs> rounds the corner and goes, "Oh, there was more," you just have to quit your job on the spot. I did quit that job later like, for unrelated uh-huh. reasons, but orange chicken was a piece of it. Fair enough. It was a little bit of it. I, I always knew the horrible thing I did there, <laughs> and I could I could never get it out of my mind. <laughs> to den, to den today's episode, thank. I'd love to have your name, and uh, it's Jordan. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know such it's good, Doge. Such a good student. I'd love Ooh, to have your name, <laughs> and what would be a movie? That you would watch with your five-year-old and be most excited about. I'm Carter, and I'm going to say Toy Story. I'm Doge. Five years old is prime Lion King time. That's It's sad. the Lion King year. A lot of people are calling it the Lion King year, which I guess is something that's catching on. But it would be Lion King time, absolutely. The cartoon, not the live action. Yeah. Uh, Gladiator. Mm. Okay. No, Shrek. Ooh, Shrek is a good five-year-old movie. Yeah, I thought you were going to say a goofy movie. We will have already watched. Don't be ridiculous. We will have already watched. <laughs> they will goofy be movie. a goofy Day movie. One. Will be a movie they get they get born to goofy movie. Yeah. Jordan's crying <laughs> to eye to eye. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam, bam. Hold up, gonna have to listen to that in yeah, between these episodes. Right <laughs> so I'm gonna go get my fix.
Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details.